Howdy everybody, uh, back again. Uh, this time I'm gonna take a stab at explaining a really cool concept called uh, transactional analysis. Um, it's at the heart of pretty much everything we do from a communication standpoint at Intrigue. Um, and it's a big part of the development of our people. Um, it's been a huge impact on my life in terms of the way I communicate and interact, uh, not only at work, but also at home. So. Uh, transactional analysis is what it's called. It was uh, it's the birth child of Dr. Eric Byrne. He's a Canadian guy, actually. I just found that out last year, which is kind of neat. I've been studying this stuff for like 10 years. Um, and it's really all about a model of communication. So um, a transaction is uh, an interaction between two or more people. So uh, transactional analysis is really uh, a model of how different types of interactions that people have. So the to start with, this is just kind of like a bare bones basics uh, 101 on a transactional analysis. Um, it came from uh, Dr. Eric Byrne and it was, it was birthed on a day where uh, he was a psychiatrist and he was talking to uh, uh, this, this guy, I think he was a lawyer, doesn't matter really, and they were talking about something serious and the person, his, his client, giggled and he was like, why, why are you laughing right now? And the, the, the client said to him, it was a little kid inside me that thought that was funny. And that just kind of sparked this idea, but what's that all about? And so, you know, years of research, um, and now decades later, you, it's a formal study. Um, the tenets of transactional analysis have been confirmed and reinforced by like neuroscience and uh, it's no longer just a model of communication, it's actually grounded in, in biology and neuroscience. And there's schools all over the world, you can get a master's degree in transactional analysis, uh, you can get a doctorate, PhD. So it's actually like widely accepted as like a, a, the reality in terms of like what's going on with people and how they communicate. So here's how, here's how it goes, I'm gonna break it down. So really it talks about how we all have uh, three ego states. Um, a parent, an adult, and a child. And at any given time, we're reacting or responding um, from one of those ego states. And to break it down a bit more, uh, we all have uh, a nurturing parent and we have a critical parent in terms of our ego states when it comes to being a parent. A uh, nurturing parent sounds something like this. When uh, you, know, you see a little toddler running across the room with milk in his hand, he spills it, nurturing parent says, that's okay, no reason to cry over spilled milk. Let's clean it up together. I'll show you how. Now, um, many of us might not have been fortunate enough to have someone like that, but if we did in our lives, and that's great, we've been modeled a uh, nurturing parent, which is amazing. Uh, critical parent sounds something like uh, the same kids running across the room, uh, spills milk, and critical parent sounds like, you dummy, I told you not to walk around with milk in your hand. Uh, can't believe you spilled that, big dummy. It's a critical parent. Um, you might have experienced that in your life, maybe not, but that's what critical parent sounds like. Uh, next piece is the child state. Uh, child state, uh, there's kind of three different components, um, and there's variations of this, but just for the sake of today, I'm going to keep it simple. And there's three different uh, child states. The first one is the natural child. This is the little kid inside of us that just wants to have fun. Um, usually, if it's sunny outside in a summer, summery day, maybe on a Friday at two o'clock, we want to leave and go play golf or you know jump in a pool, jump in a lake, something like that. You know, it's this natural tendency to want to go experience joy and pleasure and just have fun. Uh, the other child in our ego states is the rebellious child, and you know you probably all experienced one of these before. Uh, but like you can say, hey, go clean your room, and the rebellious child says, no, I'm not going to do that. Don't tell me what to do. And uh, don't tell me what to do is really at the core of rebellious child. Um, next child state is uh, adaptive child. And uh, this is uh, the child inside of us that changes our behavior in order to make somebody happy with us. So you take that same uh, child, you know, go clean your room. Um, the adaptive child inside of us will say in their mind, I don't want to do that. But out loud they'll say, okay, um, because they want mom or dad to be happy with them. So that's the adaptive child. They adapt their behavior to make someone else happy with them. The last piece is the adult. 
And the adult really acts as like an information gatherer and exchanger, and it's like a filter in terms of, you know, when you develop your adult, uh, help you understand how to respond, whether or from what ego state you want to respond. But, uh, you know, kind of bare bones, simple view of the adult state, uh, it's a information exchange and collection ego state. And it's where I'm speaking right now from. It's my adult state. I'm, I'm uh, passing information on. I don't have any emotions tied to what I'm talking about right now. And I'm just hoping that you guys will be able to take this in and use a little bit uh, in your everyday. So that's the adult. And um, to go a little bit deeper in each of them, um, in the parent state, when someone's speaking from their parent state, you'll hear things like um, opinions. So you should uh, be, don't be, um, do as you're told. Um, they're kind of like commands and opinions. Um, the child state, you'll hear things like uh, emotions. So, you know, excited, um, you know, really happy, sad, fearful, anxious, uh, emotionally based. And then the adult state is fact finding and, and information exchange. So it's all about the who, what, where, why, when, how type of information that we're giving back and forth with two people. So. That's kind of bare bones on transactional analysis. What does it mean, really? Um, well, in terms of practical everyday use, uh, here's something that you can kind of keep in mind if you're in business or in sales. Um, there's some tendencies that happen when we respond from a certain uh, ego state. So, for example, uh, if we're acting or, or behaving as if we're a child, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do two, one of two things, typically will hook in another person to have them respond or react in a certain way. So if I'm acting like a child, a natural response would be from somebody else to be acting like a parent. So if I were to say, you know, I'm really scared about something, a uh, natural response from somebody could say, hey, that's okay, we're gonna get through this, it's gonna be fine, nurturing parent. That's a natural um, exchange or interaction or transaction. Um, another one could be, you know, uh, I really don't want to do this, I'm not happy with this, rebellious child, critical parent says, I don't care if you're happy with it or not, you just have to do it. And you have to do what you're told and do what I tell you. So that's critical parent uh, response from a, from a child state. Um, another kind of, uh, well, and we'll stick with this one. So the idea is if you were to walk into an interaction with somebody and you're to start cueing um, them with child state type vocabulary and behavior, you might hook the parent in them and they might perceive you as a child. And this, is, this will happen very subconsciously. The, and the thing that we want to be careful when we're uh, acting uh, from the child state uh, is that human beings, all of us, children, adults, parents, do not get their problems solved from children. Um, children don't go to children to get their problems solved. Children go to adults and parents. Um, adults don't go to children to solve their problems, they go to adults and parents. Parents don't go to children to solve their problems, they go to adults and parents. So if we walk into uh, a business situation or a sales scenario and we start joking around right off the get-go, uh, we could be hooking a parent state in someone else and they could be perceiving us as a child. Now subconsciously, not very many people are conscious of this type of observation, but that doesn't matter because they're going to feel as though you're a child and they're going to act that way and they don't get their problems solved from children. So from a business perspective, it's not going to help us. Um, the other thing is, if, if we were to walk in there and, and start telling people that uh, you know they're wrong or they don't know what they're talking about um, and coming from a rebellious state or even a critical parent state, we're gonna hook critical parent in them as well. So it's just being conscious of how we're entering into situations. Um, a lot of times I'll see salespeople, for example, say something like, you know, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're super busy. I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. Well, that's putting yourself into a pretty solid child state perspective um, thanking somebody for just taking the time to meet with you um, that could hook their parent or their adult and they're not they might not be perceiving you as a on a peer-to-peer -peer level so um, you know as an example in the way that you can you know kind of flip that around but still appreciate their time uh, you can say something like you know hey Rob uh, I really appreciate taking the time out of your day to meet with me today uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if you know something that we can help each other with now you're still appreciating them uh, but you're not thanking them uh, like crazy and putting yourself in a subservient position. Um, the other thing is like when people do follow up emails, sometimes people will say, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. Uh, I'm a big fan of saying, you know, it was a pleasure to meet with you. Uh, it's a bit more peer to peer and uh, kind of positions us as an adult um, and, uh, and a trusted advisor uh, partner in the you know interaction. So 
that's just the tip of the iceberg. The transaction analysis is a huge subject. There's like hundreds of hours of content and I'm going to be sharing lots more. But I wanted to give you guys kind of the bare bones on transactional analysis, the ego states, parent, adult, child, and what to look for and maybe potentially avoid when in a sales interaction or like a business development situation. Okay, guys, I hope you got some value out of this one. If you have any questions about transactional analysis, leave them below. Um, I'll either direct you to some resources or I'll put another video out uh, talking about those uh, the answers to those questions. Thanks a lot, guys. See ya.